these six free framework components will guarantee you an awards site of the day win. If you're a web designer or a website creator, you probably know about awards, which is a website that collects some of the finest web pages on the internet. And they have this site of the day thing going on where each day they just pick the site of the day. And most of these are pretty stereotypical, like they have crazy animations, scrolling effects and components that, yeah, probably help them get to the site of the day level. And so again, in this video, I'm going to give you six components that you can just put on your website to guarantee a site of the day win. So without any further ado, my name is Nandi. This is Frame University and let's get started. So if we take a look at the current side of the day winner, we can see that first of all, it has a loading, um, kind of like a preloader. We're gonna explore that as well. But first, what I wanna show you, I think it's an absolute must for all of these side of the winners is that they have this smooth scrolling. I think you already like know what I'm talking about when like this scroll is like, I don't know, smoother than usual. Well, this can be achieved in Framer really easily. You just gotta have the smooth scroll component. And by the way, all of these components and little elements will be down in the description. So you can just go there and I don't know, get them for completely free and just use it in any project, both personal and commercial. So yeah, um, this component is really simple to use. You're just gonna have to put it on your website, like copy and paste it. And as you can see to the left layer spanner, you have to paste it in the desktop breakpoint and you shouldn't nest it further down. So you shouldn't nest it in the main or in the header. It just has to like sit right below the desktop breakpoint. And yeah, it's an invisible component. So you just set it to absolute positioning. Um, it's not gonna be visible and you just set the intensity to whatever value you, you need. And basically the website will have this smooth scrolling. So as you can see, if I scroll really fast to the top, it's, it slows down really smoothly rather than like, I don't know, <laughs> going super fast into the top of the website. It slows down really nice. So yeah, smooth scroll an absolute must for all site of the day winners. The next component is the animate path on scroll. So I'm pretty sure you've also seen websites that have like these crazy animations where like you scroll down the website and some sort of SVG is like drawing itself out as you scroll. So as you can see in this example, it's the framer logo and the little like badge around is uh, drawing out really nice as we scroll. So this can be achieved with a simple component. As you can see, in this case, I have multiple of these components because of course we have one for the, you know, the logo itself and for the batch and stuff like that. But basically each of them work the same way. You just set the component here on the canvas and then you either have a file that you upload on the right panel or a code that you specify. So I'm going to show you the difference here. The file is basically an SVG file, super simple. You just export a logo or something and upload it here. By the way, it has to be stroke based, which is really important. Uh, if it's a code, let me just show you. I'm just going to duplicate this. I'm going to move it here. So if you want to have something uh, custom, actually, I already done it here. I already drew something, but I can just press P on my keyboard drew any sort of path that I like, and then right click, and I will just go to copy, copy SVG. And now I have the SVG code and I can just paste it here on the right panel. Just select the component, switch to code and paste it in. <laughs> As you can see, it's just right there and it works perfectly and hopefully it will drew itself. Uh, yeah, as you can see, it's drawing as I'm scrolling down. The position is a little bit messed up because it's absolute but if I pin it to the right, it's gonna be on the right side. As you can see, it's just drawing itself as I'm scrolling down, fully customizable uh, in terms of the color, uh, the the width um, and everything. So, so yeah, um, this component is a must as well. Now the next one is is what we've seen here as we you know, landed on the website, some sort of preloader when we, when we land on the website, as you see, 
this like text comes up and then the background um, like disappears and reveals the actual website. So this can also add like a fancy little touch to, to your site. Now the smooth loading um, demo that you can find in the description as well helps you do exactly that. As you can see, if I reload this framework project, a little preloader plays. It's pretty cool. And you can design it um, like you can have all sorts of different designs. Here's like a little text uh, and it just goes away. And this is created with a component. So if you go into this loader component, you can see it has uh, three, I think, yeah, three variants. And it just goes from one variant to the other on a peer, so basically automatically. And that's how this animation plays. And at the last step, it's fully invisible. It's you know, fully animated out to the top. Um, so in order to create this, you really have to understand how components work. But if you want to dig deeper into how this specific preloader was created, you can also just go down to the description. I'm going to leave a little tutorial next to this resource, which basically walks you through the whole process of creating this exact um, little preloader inside of Framer. Now the next component or element that I'm going to show you was found on this Obis website. I don't even know, obis.agency. As you can see, I don't know if this was actually featured on the awards. I wouldn't be surprised because it looks pretty awardsy. Um, and what I liked here is that when you hover over these cards, they have this uh, effect that is not playing at the moment. So I'm gonna reload the website. So they have this like sort of like hover masking, as you can see. I'm just hovering over, and the new images are revealed in the background with this sort of like liquid mask effect. And yeah, uh, looks pretty cool, uh, looks pretty fancy. And you can do the same thing inside of Framer, as you can see. Uh, this is a Framer recreation. And this is just a simple component that I placed it within these card components. So you can just have this liquid mask component here. And on the right panel, as you can see, it has a bunch of properties, but now all of them are turned into level variables. I can remove all of these to just show you how it can be customized. First, you have the base image that is you know, shown by default, and then you have the hover image that is getting revealed as we hover over. And then how this liquid effect plays out is customized here. So the size of the effect, so, okay, that's the actual radius. So here's the size, uh, as you can see, as I make it larger, the area of this effect will be larger, but it can be smaller. Uh, and yeah, you can play around with all of these little, yeah, as you can see now, it's, it looks much, much different. Uh, but yeah, you can just play around with these to, to have a unique effect on your liquid mask. Um, and yeah, basically at the end, you have something like this, where now it doesn't show because probably the boost got a little too low. But yeah, at the end, you have something like this. <laughs> it looks pretty good, isn't it? Okay, so the last two elements or components are the craziest. So one of them is this animated 3D image or elements. I think this, if you have something like this on your website, it definitely, it's definitely going to get a site of the day award because it's just, it's just crazy, right? So as you can see, this is just the hero section and uh, in the middle of everything we have this sort of like 3d carousel that is constantly rotating around uh videos are playing and as you are moving your cursor around it's just it's just moving and it's following the cursor which is pretty pretty crazy so in order to create something like th this inside of framer you actually need quite a few components actually not too much you just need one component um in order to create this yeah, first of all, you have to create the 3D setup, as you can see right here. This is completely no code. So this part of the element is a no code. You just create these wrappers, these arm frames, and then you, you're just using 3D transforms, as you can see right here, to, to put it into like a 3D space. If again, you wanna learn about this, make sure to go down into the description. I'm gonna have some sort of tutorial again next to this resource that kind of teach you how to create this sort of 3D carousel setup. 
uh, because actually I have a full tutorial on this. But once you have this, you could either just decide that, okay, I'm going to just simply have this on my website. So instead of this interactive version, I'm just going to paste it in here and it's just going to rotate around, but it's not really interactive. It doesn't really, you know, interact with my cursor as I'm hovering over um, or around this hero section. And this is where a component, a code component comes into the into the story <laughs> because as you can see this 3d look component is here on the canvas and this is the like the default state of the component you have to actually connect something to the 3d look component so you just grab it connect it to this 3d setup that you created inside a framework without any coding and what this 3d look component does is it just makes it fully interactive uh, as you can see it just makes it follow the cursor it's that simple and you can set it to like a dragging behavior so you set dragging to yes on this 3d look then it will no longer follow the cursor as you move it around but it will just react to the dragging so you can drag it around and yeah it looks pretty good but i'll just use it on not drag mode and sensitivity you can change that you can change the rotation limit you can add that you can add perspective and all sorts of different things here. But at the end of the day, the point is that you just turned your 3D element into something interactive and you made it look better, more fancy. Uh, pretty good. And now the last component or element that I want to show you is, I think, the craziest. The name also tells you crazy navigation animation. Um, so I'm going to just actually go and preview it like this because then we can actually see the menu here. And actually we have one more component here that I didn't want to uh, like show you. But as you can see, as you hover with your cursor, little images are appearing. This is also a component that we can see many times on these awards websites. Uh, this component is called the cursor image trail. So I'm going to also try to put this in the description if I forget it. Just make sure to go to the Fame Universe website and search for cursor image trail trail all of the components are right here on this website by the way so that's that's one part of the effect but this isn't what i wanted to talk about what i wanted to talk about is the menu if i click this <laughs> this is how the menu opens uh it's super crazy right like this is not your usual menu here and um yeah so how 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 is this created actually well, this is something where you actually need to start using some code overrides. So this was actually something that I, I saw on, on a website. I don't even remember where it was. Probably I'm just going to search it up. Uh, state state of create. This is the original website. This is where I s saw the effect. I was like, I have to recreate this inside of Framer. So I just started messing around with AI to create overrides. Um, to create this effect. So my thought process was like, okay, we need to have a main container. Uh, and the main container is right here. So you can see I can change its opacity. So this main container contains all the content on the website. In this case, it's just a simple hero section, but it's really important that we have to have a separate element for, for the main content on the website. And behind, we have the navigation that is just waiting here. It's, it fully takes up the available space on the website and it's just, it's just waiting in the background. So that now that we have these two elements, all I had to do is create overrides that basically transform these elements when we, when we click certain elements, right? Or certain buttons. So for example, when I click the menu button, this override it gets triggered. And the override is something that you can see right here. This is the code. And inside of this code, actually, I think three or four overrides. Let me just see. Three overrides are defined. One, is, one of them is called with reset. Uh, the other is called with target element. And then we have a with trigger. So let's just think about it. Which one should be applied where? The with trigger is on the menu, right? On the menu button, because that's the trigger element. When I click that, I want to make sure that another element is moved away. Then the target element should be applied 
to the element that I want to move when the trigger is clicked. And the with reset is, you know, the override that resets the transform on the target element. And, you know, that's something that, you know, uh, triggers when the close is clicked here on the top right corner. So I just, you know, came up with the with this idea that, you know, all of these overheads should be communicating with each other and all of them should be in the same code. I just prompted this with AI. It gave me this. I, I'm not going to say I fully understand what is going on, but I definitely know that, um, you know, some of these, uh, some of these right here, like the scale or the rotation are what we use to move the main container when the menu is clicked. So again, menu with triggers applied then i apply the with target element to the main container because this is what i want to move away and you can see with target element it's uh, just going to animate the scale x and rotate and the values that we animate these scale x and rotate with is defined here on the with trigger so you can see on desktop it's gonna offset 50% to the right and also gonna rotate it. So this is exactly what happens, right? When I click menu, offsets 50% to the right and it sort of like rotates it a little bit. And then here, the close actually gets another override, which is the move element with a reset, which basically resets the scale and the offset and you know everything comes back to its original position like this. So as you can see in Framer, you can kind of create these awards side of the day winner level websites if you use these components or similar elements like these. So yeah, be creative, browse the resources section on the Framer.University website and watch Framer University for cool tutorials. If you have any, any questions about these or any Framer related questions, make sure to drop them in the comment section. I'm going to make sure to do my best to answer you guys. And yeah, that's it for this video. Make sure to like it, subscribe for more, and I'm going to see you in the next one.